Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by Upside, the real deal for saving money and getting a big gift card for every business trip you book. Visit Upside.com and enter the code NSS and you're guaranteed at least a $100 gift card when you book your first trip. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. And by WordPress. WordPress powers 28% of all websites, including mine. Get 15% off your new website at wordpress.com slash NSS. That's wordpress.com slash NSS. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Outside and inside the Echo Show. How special is iOS 11? Setting up PGP and Gmail. Live from the Twit Eastside Studios in beautiful Petaluma, it's the new screensavers. Welcome to the new Screensavers. This is episode 111, recorded July 1st, 2017. Leo Laporte on your left. Oh, Megan Maroney. That's the, I'm on the left. Oh. I'm Megan Maroney. I'm, You're Leo Laporte. I'm Leo Laporte on your right. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, thanks very much uh, to our uh, special guest, Len Walters. He's from Cocoa, Florida. He works the Kennedy Space Center. So his Occu he's here with Marcella. Hi, Marcella. His <laughs> Occupy Mars t-shirt is meaningful. He wants to go to Mars. I like it. Let's go. Let's all go. <laughs> Would you go, Glenn, if they said you can go, but you can't come back? That's kind of how it might be, right? You don't have, there's, it's a one-way ticket. That's a loaded look. Yeah, you're newlyweds? Yeah, no, 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 don't leave. Stay with, stay with your lovely new, new bride. That's part of the prenup. He doesn't get to go to Mars. <laughs> Actually, that would be good in a prenup, wouldn't it? <laughs> Megan, we've got, a, we've got a great show. We have a lot of, we're going to show you some new stuff. We're very excited about the Amazon Echo show. You got one. I got one. Anthony got one. Jerry got one. I actually got two because I thought, oh, I'll send this to my mom so we can have video calls. And then I liked it so much I, I've kept it because this is a perfect like on your office desk, mm -hmm. right? As well as in the kitchen. We'll describe what you can do with the Echo Show and why what the, seems like just like an evolutionary upgrade to the Amazon Echo may be the most exciting version of the Echo of all, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I have some different thoughts. I have a love-hate thing going on with it. I think it's kind of creepy and yet I love it. Also, I don't know what it does that just an old iPad setup couldn't well, do. We'll talk about it. So, we'll we'll yeah. give you a demo. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also going to talk about, speaking of iPads, iOS 11. After iOS today on Monday, you and I went back and forth. Should we install it? And I said no. Then the next day on Mac break. Oh, no, actually, it's now on Tuesday. So it was the next show. Renee Richie said, oh, you should definitely install it. If it's not your main computer. But I found it to be very reliable. We both installed iOS 11. We'll give you a tour and the reason I think iOS 11 is important is I think it's kind of a, a little window into what Apple th thinks of the future of laptop computing and of iOS. I, I really think they're moving us more towards the iOS and away from Mac. Um, PGP encryption for your Gmail. Nathan Olivares Giles will show us that. We've got a teardown of the show from the folks at iFixit. That'll be interesting. Jason Howell has a new private browser. We've got calls for up. We've got a jam-packed show. We should probably get right to it. Top news stories this week, and there was a lot of news this week. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say our top news stories revolve around numbers. Do you remember all of the numbers? I do. First number, <laughs> this was easy. Two billion. Now, question for you: What does that represent? That was, I think, the fine that Google had to pay. <laughs> no. No. Oh, how many Facebook users? <laughs> how many Facebook? Two million. <laughs> Two billion. Billion. 
Two billion. billion? Two billion. That's one fourth of the entire world, right? Yeah, and I would guess it's at least half, if not more, of the entire population of internet users. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It is amazing. Everybody's on Facebook. Well, I think that that's that's that they call it the network effect. Uh, it, you know, it's very hard now to compete with Facebook because if you say, "Well, I want to be on a social network where my family is and my friends are." It's going to be Facebook. It's you, you, Ello or somebody else isn't going to be able to come along and say, well, "Yeah, we want to be the next Facebook," because everybody's on Facebook, whether you like it or not. I think a lot of people who are on it are not fans of Facebook, but it, it's how you connect. So, well, I mean, well done. Good article, by the way, by Harry McCracken in Fast Company. He talks to the growth team. I didn't know this, but according to Harry, Facebook stalled out at 70 million. Their growth, which had been like uh, you know, straight up, started to slow down at 70 million. So Zuckerberg created a growth team, brought in some very smart people who did some very interesting things to get that growth back, and it worked. And now there, there it is, using <laughs> science and empathy. <laughs> and it's very good read, highly recommended. Harry McCracken did a great job on that. So that's number one. I'll give you another one. Okay. 2.42 billion euros. That's how much Google had to pay. Google, the, the European EU. Union has ruled that Google used its monopoly power to enter a new market shopping, that they favored Google's, do you remember Frugal? I do remember Frugal. <laughs> they, they said that Google, by favoring Frugal, has to pay a 2.42 billion uh, euro fine. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. All That's about 2.7 billion. Frugal. Frugal, Jeff Jarvis pointed out, that's more than Frugal's worth. Uh, and by the way, I don't. Jo Jeff says, and I think he's probably right. That really, what this is, is European publishers like Axel Springer and Rupert Murdoch, who are losing in the advertising battle against Google, using their lobbying skills with the European Commission to go after Google. And I think that he's not far wrong. It's not the end of it, by the way. There's two other investigations: one on Android, going on on Google, where they they used Android to uh, again take advantage of their monopoly. I can't remember what the third one is, but we're, this could go on for some time. And I should point out that while Google's not a monopoly here under most definitions, they're, they're only about 60% of search results because of Bing, uh, they're about 80 or 90% of searching in Europe. So mm -hmm. they really probably are a monopoly in Europe. Let's see, what else? There was one other number. 57 million. 57 million. Wait a minute, let me, let me guess. Uh, that's the number of licks it takes to get to the middle of a Tootsie Pop? <laughs> Very close. Oh. That is the number that you could, that Facebook and other social media companies in Germany could be fined for keeping up hate speech or illegal speech. Or, or slander. Slander up on their website for per, more than 24 hours. Per violation. Well, no, it's, it's not, it's up to 57 million. It's, oh. It starts at 5 million. And then it's up to 57 million. The longer so, it stays up. Right. Well, yes. So it has to be reported first. It's not like they're responsible for everything anyone posts on any social yeah. media network for that has. You know, I understand Germany's very sensitive because of their history mm -hmm. about things, hate crimes, Nazi memorabilia, that kinds of thing. They have very strict laws. But I worry when a government decides that they're going to determine what slander is, because rules for slander vary country mm -hmm. to country. They're very. For instance, in, in, in the Great Britain, they're very loose. Here in the United States, they're stronger. And I don't want any one country to, to become the determining factor for what is appropriate speech. It's illegal in Germany to post a swastika on right. Facebook. What if someone posted a swastika on my house and I posted a post on Facebook and said, someone you just might be posted violating this along. Yeah. on my house. We need to do something right. about it. So there's such a gray area here. And I don't want social networks policing our speech either. This ties in with a story we covered on Twig on Wednesday. The Canadian High Court was uh, deciding a battle between Google. Uh, well, uh, Google was uh, th there was uh, it was a, it was an anti counterfeiting story. So there was a company counterfeiting a product by another company. That company sued, and they said Google must take must not so show in search results the counterfeit results. The High Court in Canada said, yeah, and not only that, it doesn't just apply to Canada; it applies worldwide. And again. You have this with a single nation using its laws to determine what everybody in the world can see or find. And I think that this is a real problem. It's something that we've never encountered before because we never had it, the internet. 
Uh, but this is clearly not the right answer. No. I mean, Facebook is doing what they can. Can they do more? Yes, of course they could do yeah. more. But is this the, the stick that's going to get them to do more? I don't, I don't, I hope not. I hope it hasn't, it, it doesn't go into effect until October. Yeah. They could still, you know, the human rights organizations are saying, you know, this isn't okay. So we'll see. One more number. 10 point, now I'm in trouble. Was it 7 point? The new High Sierra Mac OS, it was announced at WWDC. It went into public beta. So if you want, I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. We talked about installing iOS 11 also in public beta on your iPad. You could install the new version of Mac OS on your Macintosh as of now. I'm not sure I would do it, but there is one thing I'm very excited about with High Sierra, and that's the new file system, APFS, which is going to make a big, we're already seeing, I've seen a, a couple of benchmarks, big difference in how fast your computer works, especially if you have solid state drives. It could be 50% faster, it could be significantly faster in copies and, and moves. So this is very, uh, very exciting. Got to point out, and you know, Renee Ritchie says this too, Whenever you're talking about a beta version of an operating system, you should never put it on your main machine, your production machine, because there's always risks of data loss, crashes, and uh, especially when you're talking about Mac OS. I've had bad experiences with betas of Mac OS, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off till September. You had a good rule when I said I, I said I was getting email and people asking, should I download the beta? Right. And your rule is, if you have to ask, the answer is always no. Yeah. If you're saying, well, what do you think? Should I install it? Say, my answer is no. But if you know what you're doing and you understand the risks, and there are risks, you can. Well, I decided to do iOS 11, and I'm glad I did. And we're going to get a little. Well, why don't we do it right now? Okay. We're a little tour of iOS 11. We uh, this is uh, uh, Megan's 12.9 inch Mac Pro. Mm -hmm. You're not going to want to do this. I don't think you're not going to want to do this unless you have a Mac Pro. Whether it's the uh, 9.7 ones, you got to tilt it forward a little yeah. bit. There we go. 9.7 ones, uh, the 12.9 ones, or the brand new 10.5 inch. I installed it on my 10.5 at home. So the first thing you're this I would say about this is I think it's a the reason it's interesting. It's a roadmap for what I think Apple is going to try to do with iOS. It's going, I think, it's really anxious. It's even done this in its ad campaigns currently to say, you don't need a laptop anymore. You want to use iOS. So what did, what did you just do? Uh, so first of all, the dock we should show. That's new. It's there. So we're in the middle of a, t a website, but you could still pop the dock up. Mm -hmm. You can pop it up. And so I pulled, let's get, get rid of that. Um, and the dock contains not only on the left, things that you want to save, you right. drag to the dock. On the right, it shows the three most recently used apps. I kind of like that, too. And so you can even do things like dragging photos into So you're email, on our, so. our website on the left. You've made on the sidebar uh, a, a, a new email, and you're just drag. Look at that. That's drag and drop. Mm -hmm. Again, something that's commonplace on a desktop, but we've never been able to do before. On yeah, iOS. that's pretty. And then you can do a third app, a floating app. This was a little tricky before. Here's, here's Notepad. We're going to float it. So it's not just as, oh, no, it took it, over, it right? It took over. It's a little, and I've always found this to be a little bit finicky. Here's, oh, this is new, too. This is the file manager. Now, yeah. that's a window. So you've got two panels, and you can slide the file manager over. Oh, you just made it a, you made it a side I, panel. There we go. So this is the file manager. It's very cool. So because you have access not only to your iCloud drive, but I have access to my Google Drive, all of my Google Drives, um, any other drives that you have here. And it, it looks more like Mac OS. One of the things that is now gone, uh, I'm sorry to say, is the control center. Maybe I'm not sorry to say, because remember when they changed the control center uh, last time with the iOS update, it suddenly went from one page to two pages when you slide up. Now when you slide up, this is the new control center. It's a combination of recent apps. That's what you see over here. And by the way, no more swiping to get rid of recent apps. You have to press, hold, and wait till you get the, uh, the X to get rid of. But also, look at this. Look how crazy this is. These are all the different controls you would have had in control panel, uh, uh, the control pane. And it, uh, Erica Sadoon, who's a really great on UI and a great programmer, formerly at uh, Ars Technica, I think, she wrote, this is insane. Look, there's, the, there's clocks in three different places. They don't seem to be related to one another. It, it's, it, there's no organization to this. What do some of these icons mean? What does that mean? The houses? That's your home, all your home apps. 
Well, right? you know, but I think that it's it's a little bit unclear. Oh, you think? What's going on here? Well, you didn't know right away that I the didn't way know to, that. To, that was confusing to that's me. That's how do you change the volume? You slide it up and down, uh, and the brightness. You slide it up and down. You know, one could say because it's a beta. Well, maybe this isn't the final. But I have to say, Apple's already kind of pushing out screenshots of it and everything. I think it is the final. Mm. I think this is what it's going to look like. I don't, I don't know. What do you think? You, you've had it for a while. I would say, on balance, I like the new yes, iOS 11. Yes, I think it does make me more productive. Uh, there are a few other features that I really like. Kevin Berg, who is one of our viewers and listeners um, and an expert in accessibility, uh, he has a speech impediment, and so Siri has never worked for him. Right. And he sent me an email saying that now this is the first time you can... Um, so you're pressing and holding the home button for to launch Siri. Siri. And now you can type to Siri. So if Siri doesn't recognize your voice, or if you're in a crowded room and you don't want to, you know, you don't think it'll recognize your voice, or you just don't like speaking to your devices, now you can type to Siri, which is, I think that's a great new feature. I, I really think that Apple is trying to turn iOS into a desktop replacement, to the, the Mac OS replacement. Now, you can do many of these things to the uh, iPhone as well, but I don't think it's as useful on a small screen. This is really designed for the Mac Pro. I think that's really what they're looking at. In fact, some of the features are only on the Mac Pro. Uh, this is this makes it look easy to create that window and see. <laughs> a, and now it's a sidebar. You can resize the sidebar. Uh, I, I feel like this is going to improve productivity quite a bit, and uh, it may be just enough to make it uh, a reasonable replacement for a laptop. I'm trying to decide whether I should take it on my next trip. It's so much light. I wouldn't take this. This is, I would rather take a MacBook than a 12 inch. Yeah, plus this case, this Logitech tech <laughs> case Makes is it really pretty big. big. But uh, the 10.5 inch with the smart keyboard case is pretty light. That might be a really good small replacement mm -hmm. for a MacBook or, a, or definitely for MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, uh, impressive. And I think the new iPad 10.5 is so much faster, so much better. This is the old 12.9 inch. Mm -hmm. The new one is also so much better, better camera that uh, we're, these are really devices designed to replace your laptop. Uh, anyway, if you have to ask, no, you shouldn't install it. But if you're comfortable, I have you had any crashes? I have not. It's been very reliable. Occasionally, I've had uh, programs freeze, but they usually come back. I feel like it's pretty reliable. This is uh, the second version of iOS. I think I had beta. some, tr I mean, it's not worth it talking about what you had trouble with because it is a beta, but I think I had some trouble with HBO Go. So if that is part of your workflow as it is right. mine, then be careful. <laughs> Should point out if you have 32-bit iOS apps, those will not run at all. Mm -hmm. I, I was, but I didn't, I didn't have any. Everybody's updated their apps by now. So I didn't, but if, but if there's something you need that's a 32-bit iOS app, do not go to iOS 11. On the line with us right now from iFixit.com, Kelsey Weber. Kelsey is Outreach Coordinator, and of course you've seen her on their YouTube videos. Hi, Kelsey. Hey, how are you guys doing? We're great. We actually had four different things we could talk to you about. You've, toured, you've done a teardown on the new uh, iPad 10.5. You've mm -hmm. done a teardown on the Microsoft Surface Laptop. You've done a teardown on the new Microsoft Surface Pro. But we thought it'd be good to, to talk about this. This is the yeah. Amazon Echo show and of all of those it's the it's the most different new thing right yeah most different and actually one of the more repairable things that we've been tearing down the last few weeks we've been super busy with all these teardowns and uh the echo show once you get inside is um pretty modular i've got some uh, cool components i can show you guys in a bit but if you were to take this Echo Show, put it on your kitchen counter and knock it off you're, and crack the screen or damage something inside, you're going to have a hard time getting past some tough adhesives to replace it. Uh, we kind of, we had quite a battle with our, with our teardown, but... Uh, this is a bad trend yeah. where they're gluing stuff together now. Everybody is doing yes. that. Yeah. Yeah, and the Echo Show's got tons of screws once you get past the adhesive, because oh. we like seeing screws. Screws are easy to remove, right. but you've got to tackle a bunch of adhesive before you get in there. So, but, uh, so tell me yeah. a couple of things. First of all, it feels like this is, this is just a, 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 a leftover fire tablet. It's a seven That's inch 980p tablet. Yeah, and yeah, so the displays had um, you know similar qualities, but they're not the same model. Oh, it's um, not. One thing, no, they're not the same, uh, but what is what is what was nice about the display was that the fact that the glass isn't fused to um, the digitizer so if it does fall off and break it is possible to just go in and replace the glass oh. um if the parts are available That's good. but um but yeah so it's not the same um as we were um, hoping but as far as um the 
price of this thing. You know, Amazon can make these things uh, pretty cheaply. So um, I wouldn't put it past them to use the same digitizer, but they, uh, but they didn't do that here. Now, here's the thing that's really different. It's the best sounding echo I've ever heard. And look at the size of those speakers. Yeah. I'm not surprised yeah. now. So we've got two inch um, stereo speakers um, wow. with these giant magnets on them. Um, I wrote about it earlier saying a small child could get some uh, bicep curls going with these things. But yeah, you're not going to have any problem hearing Alexa from across the room with these things. Now, if you, you know, turn up the music and use it as your uh, go-to boombox and blow a speaker, um, they are modular. So then they are connected. They're not soldered in. So if you can get into the device and find um, a comparable speaker, you should be able to, um, you know, replace those. But, um, and with that, so you'll be able to hear Alexa just fine with these giant speakers um, and she'll also be able to hear you because on chip we've got the same analog to digital converters and mic array um, that you see in the echo and the echo dot it's not so. more mics i thought it might be more mics so this one's got eight yeah that yeah. is isn't that more i think echo dot has a seven yeah six or seven microphones. one more yeah. so, one more on here yeah. so um she should be able to hear you and communicate with you uh, just as clearly as she does with all the other ones so but, you said uh, there were so. a lot of screws are they proprietary screws i know apple uses all kinds of screws that you have to the continue to make the yeah, yeah. different tools yeah. are these regular screws so we found um, some T5 and T6 Torx screws. Um, so although they are security screws, they're not necessarily the proprietary ones that we see on Apple devices. Um, and like I mentioned, I don't know if I've got the uh, case set up here. You can see all of these screws um, line the entire frame. There's a lot the of way them. Through. Holy A ton God. of them. And they're brightly colored and very beautiful. But if you're going to go in and repair this thing, you really need to keep it organized because there are, looking across the table, over 20 screws um, on the entire you know what you there. get, and I think you guys still sell it, that great mat where you can, yeah. it's, there's magnetic and you have little partitions on the mat and you can put your screws, you can even label it with a dry erase marker so you know where every screw yep. is and where it goes. I love that thing. Everybody should have that's, that. And of course, that's my go -to. Another, yeah. pl another plug for iFixit, but you also sell the screw heads, the screwdriver bits that will work with yep. all of the screws in here. Yeah, we've got, um, I've got it here, we've got um, a bunch of bit kits that have all the bits that you I need have that to get into yeah, um, yeah. any electronic device. Yeah, because there are a lot of proprietary funky screws out there that just aren't in the everyday person's um, you know, tool, tool Kit. I but, do uh, like the new speakers. I notice they're louder. They sound a lot better. This is easily the best sounding uh, Echo device. Uh, I use a dot with my stereo. That's going to sound better. But this is good enough. I have it in my kitchen. And I was listening in the living room. I could uh, to an audio book. I could hear it clearly. There was no distortion, even at a high level. The only problem is when you have it that high. I don't care if it's got eight microphones. It can't. She can't hear what you're saying when you're trying to shut. <laughs> shut up, Echo. Yeah. Shut up. I don't want to. Shh. Quiet. So, you know, She's we usually tear apart the things that we love, but um, <laughs> you wrote that you think Amazon should be paying us to buy this device, yeah. that you're not a fan of the device itself. It, it just, you know, it's all knowing, all hearing, you know, all listening, and now it's all seeing. Um, and it just kind of feels a little invasive. Now, some people appreciate the personal assistant um, and appreciate these devices in our lives, but it's just, it's just, it's just kind of creepy, man. I don't know. I have an Echo Dot that we tore down here and we use them in the office, but uh, yeah, just a, just a little creepy. But you know, uh, um, Amazon is build, you know, building these devices obviously to help you make your life better. We all love our tech, but um, also to kind of grab some data. They want to know what your shopping, you know, what your shopping habits are, where you're going, what you're eating, what you're doing. So if anything, um, I mean, they make these things so cheap that they, like I said, they should be paying us to use them so they can take our data. But um, but yeah, I don't know. The price tag, 250 bucks. I mean, I know you're paying for most of the tech that's on that's on chip here, but... Um, and know, but an Atom A5, uh, an Atom 5 processor, it's a pretty, is that a pretty yeah. hefty processor? Is that bigger than on the Echo? So bigger than on the Echo, um, but it's ultimately, you know, the, the capabilities with the Echo show with the video calling and everything else um, oh, it needs it, does come it? together. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah that definitely. makes sense. Uh, yeah. And t I saw two gigs of RAM. Yeah, so let me, I'm trying to find the chip here. It's okay. It's okay. It might be over there. We got, we never, we You need that thing. You know, you guys sell that thing with the magnets and you could put everything on the. No, we do. Teasing. It's over on the teardown table, but we <laughs> okay. haven't reassembled everything. We try to disassemble it so that way we can um, put it back together because that's the process we want to show in our repair guides, but uh, we haven't reassembled it. Eight one gigs yet. of NAND flash NAND to store flash. the operating system, two gigs of RAM. This is, I mean, a few years ago, this would have been considered a pretty hefty computer. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, eight gigs well, of storage. I remember when I got, I was so excited because I had an eight megabyte PC with a 
with a gigabyte hard drive. <laughs> and this is this outweighs that easily. Pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Smaller and smaller and more and more powerful. We're going to sure. give a demo. Well, for people who are interested in the show, we're going to show you what it can do. And you can make the decision whether you want the all-seeing eye of Jeff Bezos in your kitchen or living room or not maybe even bedroom. Before mm -hmm. we do that, though, I have one more question for you, Kelsey. Yeah. You did tear down, uh, as I mentioned, the Surface laptop. And you gave it the lowest repairability score you can give anything, a zero yes. out of yes. ten. Why? If we could give it a negative score, we would. There is <laughs> at least you know, and we've we've called out to, to Microsoft. Um, let us know if there is a um, a Liam, another machine, or a secret you know magical opening procedure to get into service this thing. Because when we opened up the laptop, we couldn't get into it without destroying it. You've got that really nice fuzzy Alcantara um, lining on the keyboard. We had to take a blade in there, slide underneath you have it to, to rip this off. You have to rip that off in order to lift up the keyboard to get into the device. So there really is no way to get into this to say, replace the battery when it runs out after a couple years wow. or to, well, you can't upgrade. <laughs> there's no upgradable RAM or SSD in this. Um, so that wouldn't be possible anyways, but there's there's no way to get into service it. So to me, it just kind of sounds like Microsoft is saying, okay, you know, pay over a thousand dollars for this thing. And you know, when your battery runs out in two years, just send it back to us and we'll send oh you a new God, one. Oh my God, you've melted the keys with your little heater <laughs> yeah. device. I mean, and we had to use, you know, there's tons of adhesives under that oh, board. So we had to, terrible. that's, one of the um, casualties there. And then now, once you tear it off, you could glue it back, but it's just going to look really bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, aesthetically, it's not going to be great. Um, wow. what, what did you do with the extra Alcantara? Because I feel like you could make a jaunty hat out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could. Just, uh, I I'm, feel like. If you're like me, like I mentioned earlier, with sweaty hands, it's going to get dirty. It's going to get gross. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's very disappointing, I have to say, because I do like it. It's a pretty, and I got the red one, and it's pretty and yeah. it's light. Um, but yeah, that's extremely disappointing. Yeah, and Microsoft's been tending towards this non-repairable, you know, kind of theme in a sense. We also took apart the Pro 5 and the next um, Pro tablet, and they took out one of the last um, upgradable components um, in the Pro 5. So um, in the Pro 4, there was um, removable SSD, and that's no longer exists in the Pro 5. They did expand the battery for people, so you have a longer battery life, but, uh, you know, at what cost? These are supposed to be pro devices. If I'm using this every day in my work, um, I want to be able to upgrade it without having to dump the entire device. Uh, or if you know something goes wrong, kind of like with your car, just if you've got four bald tires on your car, you don't trade it in for a new car. You just go and get you know new set of tires. Um, and the same should apply to our tech. Um, I don't know about you. I'm atta very attached to my Mac, my MacBook Pro, and um, I like the fact that I can just open up the bottom and replace the battery, and I don't have to go I in and get a whole you. new device. Yeah. So um, Microsoft, you got to tell us how to get into these things and fix them. People are going to drop them. We drop. We spill coffee on all this stuff. Um, they should be built to last uh, more than you know the cycles of the battery, or um, you know more than two years, especially with the amount of money you're paying. Like as a consumer, just just think about it before you you know go in to make your purchase. What will you do when this thing breaks? Kelsey Weber, outreach yeah. and YouTube host for iFixit.com. You've made me very sad about my. <laughs> don't Alcant drop it. Alcantara. <laughs> just don't drop it. Or when you do, come to us and we'll, we'll try to we'll try to help you out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kelsey. Great to talk to you. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Take care. In just a moment, you actually, why don't you go, because you have, I know, uh, at, in your office, you have one of these uh, Echo Shows mm -hmm. from Amazon, and I want to call you. So why don't you okay. go to your office, and while we're doing that, we're going to reposition so we can give you a demo of the uh, Amazon Echo Show. I want to talk to you a little bit about the new way to do business travel. If you ever worked for a big company, you know what I'm talking about. I know, I know very few people actually have worked for a company that has a travel department. But we used to at Ziff Davis. It was awesome. If you had to do business travel, you'd call them up. They'd book it for you. And it was good for the company because they had pre-negotiated rates and they would make sure you stayed at their hotel. I remember we had to stay at the MGM Grand every year at Comdex because they had a, a deal with the MGM Grand. And we had, I can't remember what we flew, but we had to fly the same airline. Well, what if it's just you? You're a small business. You don't have those kinds of deals. Can I recommend 
Upside.com. It's what we're going to start using for all of our business travel. We, we, we just used it the other day, and man, we saved a lot of money. This was created by the guy who invented Priceline, Jay Walker. He's an amazing serial entrepreneur. He's always looking for a business that can be made better with the internet, and he's found one. On Upside.com, you can quickly search for flights and hotels for your next business trip. You'll get presented with exactly the right choices, pre-negotiated deals, combining the flight and the hotel. Oh, you can do rides too. That's new. So they have saving on rides by adding them to your business travel. You can get all booked at once. So your company's going to save big, but wait, watch, because you're going to get a gift card, a gift card that'll give you money in your pocket while your company saves money. It's a win all around. And if you are your company, and I, by the way, uh, was booking for myself, you can apply the value of the gift card to your travel, save even more. But the nice thing for an employee is you're going to get a gift card for an Amazon, for a Target, for a Nordstrom. They have, uh, I think, 50 different merchants. You'll get that gift card within 72 hours via email, and you can spend that on what you want. Company wins, you win. It's upside all around. It's the real deal. I It blows me away how much you'll save. And I want you to do it right now because we have an even better deal for you. When you use our promo code NSS at Upside.com for your first business uh, trip, you're going to guarantee to get at least a $100 minimum gift card. $100 minimum gift card. So you'll save big on travel. You'll get a big gift card every single trip. Everybody wins. Upside.com. Don't forget the promo code NSS. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. Upside is really the upside to business travel. All right. Now, I have my Echo Show here. Again, $250. Whoops, sorry. Didn't mean to mention it in your name. Sorry, in vain. I don't know that one. Uh, first of all, I should point out, I mean, it's got a great uh, looking screen. I was pleased because I'd read how, I think it's 1024 by 980, but you know what? It looks fine. This is such a small tablet. See, it's got the time, the temperature. It shows your calendar. You going to a barbecue after this? I'm so jealous. This is Jerry's. Uh, it also shows news headlines, but we can use it to call. So I'm going to do that right now. Now, there's two ways you can call somebody. First, I'll do a regular phone call. Echo, call Megan Maroney. Okay, Megan Maroney. So now it's calling her Echo. It can't call a phone, but it's calling her Echo. She has to accept. And now because she's using a show, I'm going to see her and she's going to see me. It, well, or if I put my hand in the camera, she's going to see me. It's a good picture. I have to say the quality is excellent. I've made a few phone calls, at least as good as Skype. It's nice because the camera is well positioned. You don't have to, you know, it's not looking up your nose. It's not looking over your head. It's very easy to use. That's why I sent one to my mom. Sound quality is excellent. You can hear me well, Megan? I can hear you just great. And I hear you really well. I mean, the quality is excellent. So that's a phone call. And if you're calling a... Whoa, she just disappeared. If you're, <laughs> if you're calling a regular Echo, you know, one of those tubes or an Echo Dot that doesn't have a screen, you'll still get, you'll still get audio, you just won't get video. But I have a feeling they're gonna sell a few shows to people, families, like I bought one for my mom, one for me, so I can call her. I think you're gonna sell a lot that way. Even though you have Skype and FaceTime, it's, it's kind of cool. If you have the app, Amazon Echo app on your phone, by the way, you can also place a call from a phone. And because your phone has a camera, they will see you and you will see them. So that's nice, video calling. But, okay, I'm going to hang up now. Uh, uh, okay. uh, what's her name? Megan. Echo, hang up. You, one of the controversial features on this was called drop-in. And the idea, and I think Amazon did not communicate this well. Drop-in is like an intercom system. So many houses, ours have echoes in many rooms. In fact, I have an echo in every room. So I even got one for our son so I can, I can intercom him. I can drop in on Michael. He's got one of the cylinders, but I can say, I'll say computer. I said, computer, call Michael, and it will know to call Michael on his echo device. Or it may ask me, do you want to call him on his phone or his echo? It will give me a choice. It'll call him on his echo device, and it turns on audio immediately. So he doesn't have to accept, it just goes, let me, I'll show you with Megan. Echo, drop in on Megan. I couldn't find a contact matching Becky. To see your contacts, go to the Alexa app. Okay, and this I should point out is a problem. For instance, we have an Echo in the gym, and I was saying drop in on gym, and she said, I don't know any gyms. So I changed it to gymnasium, and then it worked better. So let me try that again. Echo, drop in on Megan Maroney. Megan Marone, right? Right. 
Now watch what's going to happen at her end. It makes a noise at her end. Notice the camera doesn't come on. That was the first thing we were worried about. Oh, somebody's going to just kind of snoop at us. But you can hear me, right, Megan? You didn't have to do anything to accept. She is, I can hear you. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, there's no surprise video, but you no. should know there is some surprise audio. So I, it, just like an intercom, even though we're, we don't even have to be in the same building, I can, for instance, I could say drop in on my mom and talk to her. Mom, are you there? So th that you only want to do with somebody you know pretty well. And there are very good privacy controls. You, somebody has to be in your contact list. They have to have an echo, and, and, and that phone number has to be registered as an echo user. And then they have to enable you, allow you to drop in. But I love this idea, especially in the house. I can say drop in on Michael, and I can say, Michael, dinner's ready. And, it's, and he doesn't have to do anything. He just says, okay, you hear him, he hears you. So that's different from a call. It's, it's instant audio. And then picture if you turn it on, but you don't have to. You can't see me yet, right? Or no, I can't see you because you're not standing in front of the, the camera. Oh, but the camera is turned there on, I are. guess, because I dropped in on you. You can see my, you can see my video. Okay, there I am. Yeah. Uh, so that's drop-in versus uh, versus call. Drop-ins. Uh, think of it as an intercom, something you would want to do with people you really like. But I'm reassured because when we first heard about this, we thought you'd get instant video too, and that would be a bad idea. And Amazon clearly doesn't want to do that. Uh, Echo, why don't you, uh, Echo, <laughs> Megan, why don't you come back here and okay. we can talk some more? Echo, hang up. So it does all the things your regular Echo does, but it takes advantage of the screen. So, for instance, um, some of the flash briefings on the uh, Echo have video. Let's let's do a flash briefing. I've added the Tonight Show to our flash briefing, the Tonight Show monologue. Echo, flash briefing. Here's your flash briefing. So if it's audio, you'll get some text on here that says From what it Tonight is. From the Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. But in some cases, CNBC Squawk Box, uh, the Tonight Hello. Show. Guys, it is 4th of July. You're going to get video. Yeah. So you can, you can I mean, I think that's pretty cool. British, Echo, stop. So it uses the screen in, I think, some smart ways. Echo, stop. Sorry, I'm having trouble. Please try again. Anybody who has an Echo has heard that once or twice. Echo, stop. Echo, home. Home is the home screen. Mm -hmm. By the way, that is a picture Jerry took, right? So you can have, it normally has a rotating uh, bunch of screens, but you can have a single, just one. I wish you could do a slideshow of pictures. You can ask for pictures, though. It can mm -hmm. be used as a frame, right? Yeah, you can just say, Echo, show me my pictures. And these will be pictures that are uploaded to Amazon's Prime photo library. So you, you have to be a Prime. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. Go ahead. You. Echo, show me my photos. Here are some of your photos. Uh, you have to wait until she hears it otherwise. Oh, oh there's Jerry and his wife, Samantha. Aren't they pretty? What a cute couple. So it's going to do a... Oh, remember this? This is us shooting the, uh, the screensavers open. So what's cool is this is, becomes now a photo frame. Mm-hmm. And I think it's pretty good, don't you? Yeah, that's what I've been using it mostly for at home. You can Aww, make albums, or you can say, like, uh, you can say, Echo, show me my pictures from Texas. She didn't hear me. Echo, show me my photos from Texas. This should be interesting. I don't think Megan's ever been to Texas. Texas. No, she's from Texas, right? You're from Houston, aren't you? Uh, and Dallas and Austin. Oh. Um, yeah, or you can even say, like, on this day... So, I don't know what to, show me, Echo, show me my photos from today. Here are your photos from that time. Oh, that's really interesting. Wow. That was today? Oh. Now, uh, can I watch, we mentioned video, can I watch YouTube or Amazon Prime video on here also? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to do it? Please, be my guest. <laughs> Echo, play Twit Live on YouTube. You can watch us on here? Live. Playing top result from YouTube. Okay, that, we're going to explain why she said top result in a second. But So you said, Live. wait a minute, that's us. Top result from YouTube. Oh, dear. We're going to have a okay, problem we're here. We're going to explain why she said top result in a second. But, uh, so you said, Live. wait a minute, that's us. <laughs> oh, no. Inception. <laughs> Echo, stop. So what was the command you used for that? I said, show me... Show no, me. I said play. You said play. Play. Okay. I said play. Echo, home. So there's another command you can use with video, which is show me. Show. So, Go ahead and do that. Echo, 
Show me Twit Live on YouTube. Here's what I found from YouTube. This you might use more often. I think this will work with music too. So you're getting a listing of all the Twit stuff. So watch will give you the top result. That's why she said the top result, mm -hmm. the first thing in this scroll bar. But, but show will show you all the choices and then you can scroll through it and tap it. This is a touch screen so you can tap things to uh, launch them. I think that, I have to say they've, I'm impressed with how well they've integrated video into this because of course the Echo didn't have any video at all. There are uh, plus and minus buttons on the top for volume. This is the standard mute button. And remember, this is one of the great things about the Echo. You can say, don't listen, turn on the mute button. But does this also mute the camera? Yeah, so that's what happens um, whenever my husband walks into the room and sees the, uh, the Amazon show, he turns it off. He, he doesn't want it to be <laughs> He so, doesn't, yeah, yeah, he just turns it off because he doesn't like the idea that there's always a camera watching his family. Right, right. I'm okay with it because I think I mean. this is incredibly <laughs> valuable. This is like a smart television. Yeah, and you know, just you never realized you needed the screen. Like we always ask uh, our echoes to tell us the time of movies, and then she'll tell you, and then it goes by so quickly. You're just like, oh, and we did it today. They were look. looking for a movie, and you can just press. Yeah. You can also use it as, as you know a touch screen and press which movie theater you want, and then it shows you the the um, setting so it goes it fluid from voice right. to touch right. which is what we want right we want you know we don't want everything to be voice and everything to be touch we want it just to be what it is the interface when we need that it, it, it's exactly that Ech it, let's show you what it does with music e echo listen to music here's a station you might like roy orbison oh man i like it now one of the things that it does is it doesn't just waste this screen while you're listening to music. It's going to show album art, it's going to show the song, and karaoke. it shows lyrics. Rubbing, uh, you want to do a karaoke party? Sure. Mm, oh no, I can't see the link. I, I see a love, love that, that money just can't buy. buy. Echo, stop yeah. for God's <laughs> sake, stop! So I like that feature. Now it doesn't do it with everything. Echo, stop. Really, stop. Echo, really, stop. I am way too proud of my bad singing voice, I think, but... Um, I don't know if you noticed that we were talking about the speakers uh, with Kelsey. They, they really do sound better do than great. any Echo device. In fact, good enough. This, is, this would be as good as a kitchen radio with some nice bass, some good response. Uh, it's stereo, although with the speakers being right next to each other, you're not going to get a lot of stereo separation. But I'm pretty impressed with the sound quality on this. So what else can it do? Oh, it can do all the other Echo games, but, well, for instance, if you've ever played Jeopardy, let's do that. Echo, let's play Jeopardy. Now, we may have used up all the questions already, so let's see what happens now. Echo. Sorry. Let's play Jeopardy. Yeah, they may just say, but... Alex Trebek shows up. The questions are on the screen in Jeopardy format. Look just like the Jeopardy. So I think as over... Sorry, I'm having trouble accessing your Jeopardy. Yeah. Skill right now. Yeah, we used up all the questions. You only get six questions a day. I thought that was kind of nice. In other words, uh, clearly Amazon's had this out for a while. Uh, the big name makers of skills have known about this and are taking advantage of the screen. And, and it works quite well. Now, they've also upgraded uh, Echo a little bit. Because I don't know if you remember, we tried this as a head-to-head -head against the Google Home. We asked them both to beatbox. And all the Echo did was say, hmm, Boots and I don't know that one. Yeah. Boots and cats and boots and cats. It was stupid. Let's watch this. Echo. Beatbox. Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And it was a different one than it's last time. It's different every time. She's like a human. She can give house. you spelling bee words. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they could always do that. Does mm -hmm. it show but then it on you can screen? See the word, now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to so, see a spelling bee word? Go ahead. Let's Echo. Go. Show me a spelling bee word. The winning word at the first ever oh. national spelling bee held in Louisville, Kentucky in 1925. L O U I S. A what? type of flower in the iris family. Gladiolus. G L A D I O L. U S Gladiolus. See, that's this cool. This is good accessibility. You know, if you yeah. can't, if you can't hear, hear. Yeah. then yeah. it would be great. I think it's expensive. Two hundred fifty bucks, right? Or three hundred bucks? It's expensive.
You buy uh, two and it's $100 off. Yeah, big deal, right? <laughs> two, uh, $229.99. You have to be an Amazon Prime member, but it kind of makes sense. It really isn't that useful without it. Look, there's CNN, so I guess there's other video now uh, added to it. Did we uh, say you could also watch your, like, Mozart in the Jungle or Amazon? Amazon Prime Video. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Uh, I'm, I love it. I think it's the best echo ever. And I don't, I'm not too worried about it listening in or watching us because we can see with, uh, with traffic analyzers like Wireshark what's going over the network. And they don't send video or audio back unless you specifically say, A, I want to talk to Echo, then it has to send it back to Amazon servers, or I want to make a call. So it's not like it's watching you when you're not asking for mm -hmm. something. Uh, so it doesn't bother me. Okay. I, I'm pretty impressed. What do you think about its form factor or what it looks like? I, I think love it is it. incredibly ugly. I got the white one. It looks great in my kitchen, and it fits right in. I, I, you think that's ugly? I do think it is ugly. Maybe if you I got the white one, you would like it better. Maybe, yeah. The black one is a little monolithic. The white one looks like a kitchen appliance. In fact, we were talking, th there's the white one. It really is uh, something that, that has been the holy grail for computer manufacturers going back 15 years. Remember the Audrey from Cisco, uh, the Chumbi, the uh, Sony, the Dash, the Braga Dash, the Sony. A lot of companies have been trying to make something like this. It's the voice assistant that makes all the difference. I, I love it. I'm an, I, two thumbs up. Would you recommend this to friends or family? <sighs> That's a good question. I mean, if you have any privacy concerns at all, I would say no. Um, if You're living in the wrong century if you have privacy <laughs> concerns. You're carrying around in your pocket something with a microphone, a camera, a GPS, and a full-time Internet connection. Yeah. I mean, if you have... Uh, relatives that you talk to a lot, My I mom's would say love that hers. it yeah. would be great for that. But I don't know. I'm not. I mean, the the voice. Like I said before, if you know, it's seamless in terms of using voice and touch. I'm not quite sure what the difference between just using an old iPad and setting it up in your like. If you're a DIYer, I think that you could probably make something like this with an old iPad. Um, Siri is not as good, but I do think that. Uh, anyone who is good as is, is a maker could make How about this? Like this? I disagree because, of course, Amazon has the advantage of having relationships. Like, there's a Nest skill. Echo, show my Studio B camera. Okay, getting the Studio B camera. This is a Nest cam in my office. I can see what's going on. I can talk to my office. I can hear what's going on in my office. This is right now. That's a security in the cam. I can even see my Ring video doorbell. Echo, show my front door. Okay, getting the front door camera. Now, the Ring's probably asleep unless it's been recently uh, awoken, so it takes a second or two to get it turned. Oh, there it is, front door. Is it open, your front door? No, oh. that's oh, the I doorbell. Oh, I that's looking out. It's the doorbell. <laughs> It's not mine, actually. It's Anthony Nielsen's. But the point being, it works. It integrates in with a lot of home automation stuff. That would be hard to do with an iPad yes. in a box. It's got Echo, which is frankly better. I think she's better than Siri. I hate to. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Uh, I'm it's okay. I think really, if we had, if 20 years ago you had said you could get this, I could get this for 229 in my house. I would have jumped. I would have said, please, when? And you say, in 20 years. I would have been, I, this, this is the, don't take this for granted. This is a big deal. Echo, home. I, I still think I need some time to say, like, I mean, my, um, myself that likes everything and wants everything and likes the idea of having this cool thing that I can show people, like, look, right. I can do this, like, definitely would buy this. But then my average regular person, do I need this? Uh, is it worth possibly, like, I accidentally called someone and I didn't know that I dropped in because I said something and no, I'm walking naked past it? No, that's not going to happen. And put it in your kitchen. I wouldn't put it in your bedroom. No, that's for sure. I, who doesn't? I, maybe I walk naked in the kitchen. You don't know that. I walk naked in the kitchen, but I'm not too worried about it. If anyone wants to see me naked, please phone. <laughs> drop, <laughs> drop right in. Come, come on right in. Just drop in on Leo. Uh, I, I need some time with this before I tell you whether I would recommend it. It's, it's only been still a, few days. a great kitchen timer. <laughs> Echo, set timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. It'd be really nice if it had like a 
clock face on here. Oh. oh. That Ooh. That's something I missed because I don't know. You can ask how long it's left in your Ooh. timer. You can watch any of our shows on it. Just that alone, I would recommend it. Yeah. It's the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. All right. That's just my opinion. And in just a little bit, we're going to show you if you are, a if you're the kind of person that puts your cell phone in your microwave when you get home, stay tuned. We're going to show you how to use PGP encryption in Gmail. Nathan Oliveris Giles will do that. Uh, we've got a lot more coming up. I want to show you. Have you been to my website? Mm -hmm. I moved my website to WordPress.com about six months ago. I am loving it. Go to LeoLaporte.com. I, I have to say, I love WordPress.com so much, I'm actually blogging more. There's something about it. First of all, I, I had WordPress for years, but I self-hosted it. And I actually stopped doing that because I always was working on, you know, security updates and I wasn't posting as much. Click that, that post, Machu Picchu in the Galapagos. I put my best shots up there. I did this uh, yesterday. I just love how WordPress looks. I'm using a WordPress template. There are hundreds of them. This is a... I think it's 20, called 21st century, something like that. Or no, it's called 2017. I love this template. Look at that. On the right, I get my tweets, my social media. Uh, it, it's so easy to set up a website. Whether you're setting up a blog for yourself, a business site, WordPress.com, you're going to make a big impact. And here's one of the things I like. WordPress is, WordPress.com is a community. So I have... I can't, I don't know how this happened, more than 500,000 followers every time I post, they get a little notice that I posted on my WordPress blog, vice versa, there's a front page. It's a great way to publicize your business or your blog. Um, they've got a search engine optimization, it's automatic. There's, because WordPress powers 28% of the internet, everything works with WordPress. There's lots of blogging tools, utilities, WordPress has their own apps. So you're, you're kind of working in the mainstream. And by the way, excellent support. They call them happiness engineers. I wasn't sure what template to use, so I just asked. Happiness engineer within an, an hour said, oh, you want to do this uh, front page slideshow full bleed? Try 2017. I love them. Very affordable. They have plans for everybody. Find out why 28% of all the websites in the world run on WordPress, including, by the way, Quartz. You know, with that great site mm -hmm. with Buda. Remember when Quartz came out, everybody said, oh, this is an incredible design. This is a revolution. It runs on WordPress.com. WordPress.com slash NSS. If you go there to sign up, by the way, you'll get 15% off any new plan purchase. WordPress.com slash NSS. Yes, it ain't your father's WordPress. It's better. It's so good. WordPress.com slash NSS. And while you're there, go to LeoLaporte.com. Take a look at my, uh, my pictures from my vacation. I finally, I'm done. I finally finished. And I talked about in that blog post all the tools I used to do the, get the, because I usually come home, I came home with 400, four, I'm 4,000 pictures. <laughs> and, I, and usually what will happen is just to be a pile on my hard drive. But now I've got it, so I see this slideshow and everything. I got it all, so I'm done. I don't have to ever look at these pictures, and it's all in there if you want to find out how I did it. Thanks to Chris Marquardt. He gave me the, uh, the tools to get through my pictures very quickly. All right, what's next? Nathan Oliver Giles. He's done something that so many people have asked us about. I use, well, I use GNU Privacy Guard, which is an open source implementation of PGP encryption on all my emails. If you get an email from me, uh, it will, one thing you can do, of course, is you can encrypt it. So if we have an arrangement, I've got your key, you've got my key, I, we can have an encrypted conversation. Nobody, not even the, the big machines, the big brains in the federal government can look at. But I also use uh, PGP and GPG for signing my email so that you know that I definitely sent it and it hasn't been modified since I sent it. I think that's really useful. I do it in my email client, but for years people have said, but I use Gmail, how can I do it on my web page? Nathan shows you how. A lot of people haven't embraced PGP because it's kind of tough to set up. Right. You have to basically like create this set of keys and it's intimidating and what does that mean and how do I share that with people and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of our uh, producers here, Jerry, uh, he actually uh, clued me into a, a Chrome extension that I'm kind of sad to say I didn't know about previously, <laughs> but it's quite popular. It's called Mailvelope. And uh, Mailvelope is the easiest tool that I've seen so far 
to set this up and to use it. So the first thing you want to do is generate your PGP keys. You can set however many you'd like, okay. but basically it's a public address so people can route stuff to you, but, but it doesn't mean that people will have access to it because it's only one half of the equation. Okay. I have my private key on the other side to decrypt the message. That being said, it's, pro it's password protected because these, are, these keys are just kind of numbers and letters and it's not easy to remember. So right. When you create these things, you're going to have to remember what your password is <laughs> or else you won't have access to it. And if you ever want to revoke access to that key and you don't have your password, you're pretty much SOL. You're, okay. It's like not going to happen. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually set up, I, I created an uh, email account called twittest007 <laughs> at outlook.com. And uh, I'm going to create a PGP key associated with this email account. And... I'm going to click this advanced button here. I'm going to set this uh, this PGP key to expire. Let's do it um, like next Monday. If you don't want to have an expiration date, if you're, you say, hey, you know what? I want to have one PGP key for the rest of my life. Yeah. That's cool. That totally works. But if you want to use something temporary, let's say maybe you're in one of those situations where you are sharing sensitive information. Mm -hmm. It might be something that could put you at risk professionally, even put you at risk for your life. You might not want these things to exist forever. Right. That's totally fine. Or maybe you just don't want the hassle of having to remember that password all the time. Yeah. That totally works too. Whatever your reasons, decide whether or not it's um, temporary for you or not. I've got my expiration date set. I've got my password and it matches. And so now I'm going to generate these keys. Now what I'll do is I will show you, I'll go to display keys here and you can see different things. I created the other day a one by the name of Peter Parker tied to my work twit email address, <laughs> Nathan at twit.tv. Uh, now we have my James Bond joint here and I was corresponding with Jerry. All right, so the next thing you want to do is write an email and you want to encrypt that email with your PGP key using uh, the Mailvelope extension. So okay. uh, I'm going into my Outlook account that I've set up to specifically test this thing. And with the extension in place, uh, you see this little pop-up here. You see this ah. like little notepad? Yeah. Well, you click that, and then that opens up a new message. And I say, okay, here is my message. Mm -hmm. That looks good. I'm going to send that to Jerry, cool. who have already added his key. I've searched for that, and I'll show you how to do that after this. Okay. And now I want to say encrypt. And so you can but... see this all looks like go gobbledygook, right? Yeah. I just wrote it in there. You know, hey Jerry, this is a PGP test, Nate. And now it looks, now it's, what is that? I can't read that. Well, what yeah. that is, is that is basically the encrypted version of my message. Okay. And, and so then you just send that? Exactly. If anybody were to intercept this, if someone hacked into my account, they wouldn't be able to read this because it's encrypted. So right. if they got a hold of this, they wouldn't be able to tell what it is or anything like that, who <laughs> it's from, all these sorts of things. So then I set, hit send. And Jerry won't be able to read it unless he has my public PGP key. Okay. So he can, you know, he sees my email address and he says, okay, you know, uh, uh, who's that? Yeah. And he can search for my email address. Uh, if I shared it publicly, he'd be able to find it and add me and then decrypt it. Okay. Uh, and if not, then I would have to send it to him directly. So let me show you how to find someone on this service. Basically, in Mailvelope, you go to the import keys tab over here. And then you look for someone either by their name or their email address or by what's called a key ID, which sometimes people will share on there as well. It's not the full PGP key, but it's a way to find people. And you might right. see that. You might see PGP colon, and then it's kind of like a maybe like a dozen numbers and letters or something. Yeah. That's what that key ID is. Okay, okay. So let's look for Leo. And then as you can see, Leo has a lot of PGP <laughs> keys set up here. Could this be other people who have the same name too? But I mean, it's probably our Leo. Yeah, but. theoretically, there could be multiple Leos out there. I actually talked with Leo about this already, and he told yeah. me he had something like 12 to 15 different keys set up. Um, like Leo. Yeah, so it just kind of depends. And then uh, what you do is you click uh, one of those blue links, and then it's, it shows you their PGP key here. So, so all this garbled up text, that's the actual PGP key. Wow. And then you see this blue key here that pops up. I got my green little plus button. I hit it. And then that has oh. imported that key from Leo into uh, the Mailvelope extension for me. Okay. So now we go back to display keys. And I see all these different options here. I see here's Leo Laporte. I see Jerry Wagley. I see my, uh, my James Bond account. I see my Peter Parker account. But now if I want to send 
private correspondence to Jerry or to Leo or to my other account, uh, I can do the, that uh, using this app. So again, you know, there are a lot of different options out there to use PGP. Um, there are some Mac apps, there's some Windows apps, there's yeah. like online services. Um, this is the one that I found that has been the easiest. In fact, I've tried to set stuff up earlier this week. I actually <laughs> generated some keys and was unable to figure out like why I was getting it wrong. I think it's the place to, to start if you want to use uh, PGP. I should point out, he added a key, but it wasn't for Leo Laporte, it was for Matthew Leo Laporte. I don't know who that is, that's not my key. Uh, if you want, <laughs> the, usually the best way to go if you're searching for a key is by email address, because presumably if you search for my email address, you're going to find my key, not Matthew Leo Laporte's key, he has a different email address. If you want to know more, there's a lot more about this on Know How, it's episode, what was it, 334? Mm -hmm. uh, I have it written down here, wait a minute, hold on a second. Yeah, 334, coming up. Uh, and of course, it's uh, Nathan while Father Robert is on his tertian ship, but his uh, vow of silence ends in August, and he will be back on Know How with Brian Burnett uh, in a couple of months. Actually, it's next month now. Happy July, everybody. Uh, let's go. You want to do a little call for help? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the UK. Time for a call for help. We brought him back because I just love saying Blackburn, Lancashire, UK. <laughs> Hello, John. Hello. Great to talk to you once again. I can't remember your question last time. Did we answer it? Did we help you? Yeah, I got Synology. Oh, you got a Synology. Um, you like it? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah, I love it. Good Especially choice. Especially the DS notes on it. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that was, that's right. You were asking about what, what is a yeah. private notepad I can use to replace Evernote. Perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. So what can we do for you this time? Um, I was watching iOS today, and you recommended Infinity Photo. Um, I'm not a serious photographer. I just when I go out for runs or on my mountain bike, I take photos with my iPhone. So I've got a couple of questions about Infinity Photo. Sure. I currently use Pixelmator on the, my Apple Mac and on my iPad and on my iPhone. Um, I use Apple Photos for my storage. I don't use anything else. I back it up to Google Photos, but I don't actually use it for anything apart from backup. Um, what I want to know is how does Infinity Photo work with Apple Photo? Because Pixelmator integrates it with right. an extension. Right. It's um, a good question, especially since uh, Affinity Photo is twenty dollars. I don't know how much that is yeah. in pounds, but it's a lot of money for it's an iOS. Yeah, it's twenty quid. It's actually twenty quid. Yeah. Twenty pound. Twenty quid. So uh, I I really like it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's forty dollars. Well, that's for the Mac. It's twenty dollars for the iPad. Oh, okay. He's asking for the iPad. Yeah. Uh, they yeah, do have I'm a Mac and a Windows version for both. I yeah. Okay, here's my thought on this. It's user interface is opaque. It's very difficult to uh, figure out because they have lots of icons. I think there's going to be a learning curve on Affinity Photo. I don't find the same learning curve on Pixelmator. I really think Pixelmator is very easy to use. Pixelmator does many of the same things. I would say Affinity Photo does more. And on the iOS, on the iPad Pro specifically, I think they've tuned it to really take advantage of features in the iPad Pro. But Yeah, I've got an iPad Pro. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pixelmator is pretty, if you're, if you're satisfied with Pixelmator, I think you might want to stick with it. I don't think Affinity Photo has a uh, plug-in to integrate with photos. I haven't looked real hard for it, but I haven't ever seen anything like that. I think that. you have to like go through, use Snapseed or something, like there's an extension, you have to go around. It's, that's kind of a pain yeah. in the butt. But I haven't bought Affinity Photo. I just use Pixelmator, and that's fine for me. Like, I, well, I'm not a photographer by, either. By the way, I should be clear. You mm. can open a photo from your photo library on iOS in Affinity Photo. I mean, that's it sees the photos in your photos library. But I don't know of some sort of integration. Like, if you're in photos, can you send it to Affinity Pro, something like that? I don't know about that. I, I'll have yeah, to look yeah, at that. Yeah, with Pixelmaker, you can just press an extension, and it comes up with two options. I think one's Quick Edit and one's Distort or something like that. Yeah. No, don't I don't have, believe you don't Affinity need does to that. Leave the photos app to so you stay in the Photos app. That's nice. Actually, that's a nice feature. Yeah. I also want to point out that in High Sierra, Photos has been even more improved. Apple is, put, is putting some real energy into Photos. On the Macintosh, I, and I suspect this will migrate to iOS, uh, Photos is being more, become more and more of a kind of a standalone photo editor. Not as powerful as Photoshop or Lightroom or Affinity or Pixelmator, but for a lot of people, you know all they need, and that's in, that. That's going to that's going to continue over time. It's going to get better and better. Um, they've really they've really put some effort into this. Look at this. You've got curves now in photos. This is this is you've got you know you've got different channels. This is becoming a pretty sophisticated editing program. I love Affinity. 
20 quid is a lot of money for an iOS app. This is the way I look at it. When I watched you use Affinity Photos, I thought, okay, you know when people use really big words and you can sort of see that they're mm -hmm. using a big word and it's like they kind of look silly? Like, I feel like that's what would happen the, to me if I used the, Affinity Photo. It's the big word of yeah. photo editing. Right, apps. like you'd look at it, my photos and be like, oh, that's obviously a filter and, you yeah. know, she should just stick with... Oh, I see what you're saying. But yeah, but you look at this. So these, these kinds, for instance, Affinity supports 360 degree images and you can edit them natively. I know you can't do that in Pixelmator. So, but I only use an iPhone. You don't use it, right? Take, so that's I the only take with an iPhone. That's yeah. the decision. If you are dissatisfied, or there's things you feel like you want to do that you can't do with Pixelmator plus photos, then maybe you should look at the capabilities of Affinity. But if you don't, if you're happy, it's not better. It's more. It does more things, and it's hard to use. I would say it's a fairly. The interface so is what, fairly different. So, would you what what would you say? Pixel Mate is probably like um, Photoshop Express, where yeah. Infinity Photos, like the full version of yeah Photoshop, or more like yeah. the GIMP. I mean, it's really it. I've never <laughs> yeah. seen anything like it. One of the reasons uh, I think Renee Ritchie likes Affinity Photo is because you can edit 360 degree uh, images. I mean, you can't do that in anything. That's really unusual. So they've really loaded it up with features. Um, I would say until you feel a need for it. I mean, but on the other hand, if you look at these videos and you look what they're doing, and you say, "Wow, I really would like to remove a gazelle from my shot you of the can, African." You can, you can do that. You with can Pixel do that. Pixel yeah. All right. Yeah. Or right, Snapseed, right. or yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, is uh, Affinity is more of a drawing program. I guess it's kind of like, it's uh, Pixelmator is a drawing program as well. Uh, it's more. It's got a lot of Photoshop features as well as uh, photo editing yeah. features. Well, the only thing I really use Pixelmator for is to alter the levels and stuff like that. I think you're, if you're happy, I would stick with what you've got. Pixelmator is very, very good. Uh, you okay. know, I, Affinity is the new hotness. Mm -hmm. And so that's yeah. why it's getting a lot of attention. Pixelmator was the new hotness. <laughs> uh, but I think they're doing a very good job too. Uh, what, they, what is it you say in the UK? Horses for courses? It's uh, it's never heard of that. Never heard of that one. <laughs> <laughs> might have, might have made that one up. Uh, here in the states, we say six of one, half a dozen of the other. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I think it's a toss. Up. Yeah, yeah. So I would st I would stick with what you know and you like uh, until you feel like you need more, and then maybe it's time to look at Affinity. Okay. No, you just frozen, and I didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think you. I don't think you. In fact. Uh, I, w I took one of my favorite photos and I p pushed it too far with Affinity. It had so much that I, I the result was pixelated and it was it, it's it's almost too powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't need so much. So uh, I probably will stick with Lightroom to be honest on iOS. Yeah. Hey, thanks. It's great to talk to you, John. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thanks. Right, for thank you very much. In. Cheers. They don't. Horses for court. Did I make that up? I, I think you made that up. I think I made that up. Mm -hmm. Well, I brought up. I I was talking about uh, Google's. Uh, search Facebook's, you know, pro one of the problems, I called it a sticky wicket, that, you know, yeah. the, the free that's speech a, that's issue. A, that's a UK. That's a British thing. Yeah, yeah, Jason had never heard it before. He's like, a sticky what? A sticky wicket. Sticky wicket. When yeah. you play cricket, like, you know that. Right. When the ball doesn't fall off, even if you hit it, that's mm -hmm. a sticky wicket. Yeah. So, like, Facebook's free speech problem is a sticky wicket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're just too literate for the rest of us. That's the problem. <laughs> I it's like use Affinity Photos. That big word person. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Jason Howell. He's a little more in my speed. He'll be joining. <laughs> he'll be joining us if you want to ask a question about our All About Android host of our All About Android host. Here's how. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. Tinker Toy Tech is asking in the chat room, has anybody ever gotten Display Duet to work with the 10.5-inch iPad Pro and Windows 10? Watch um, a Tuesday's iOS Today because yeah. I demonstrated it, and it's awesome! Right. We should ask Alexa to play it right now. It's awesome! You what, ask your Echo Show to show. Yeah, I, I become a big fan. You remember we had trouble the first time we used Duet. It mm -hmm. kind of, we had to, but somehow it's gotten easier easier to use or I've gotten smarter, but I, it works very nicely with I Windows I think it's 10. gotten easier to use. You have not gotten smarter. <laughs> That's what we call a backhanded compliment, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage, ladies and gentlemen. This is the mortgage industry getting smarter. It comes from Quicken Loans, the best mortgage lender in the country. I mean, bar none. 
and they decided that the mortgage process was getting a little uh, antiquated. It was like straight out of the 19th century. Why should you have to go to a bank hat in hand with a box of papers under your arm showing them your financial worth when you could do everything you do and get a great loan on your smartphone? And by the way, the last time we got a home loan from that big bank, Lisa and I bought our house three years ago, it took more than a month and they kept asking for more materials. Man, next time we're using Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. It's easy to use, it's a transparent process so you can apply simply and completely understand the mortgage process and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Whether you're buying your first home or your 10th, Rocket Mortgage takes all your financial information. By the way, no bankers boxes, no document folders. You can do it all online because Rocket Mortgage has partnerships with all the banks. So you just press a button and transfer your bank statements or your pay stubs over to them. Then based on your income, assets, and credit, Rocket Mortgage will in minutes churn on all that and find the perfect home loans for you. And you can pick your term. You can pick your rate even in some cases. It, it, find the rate and the term that's just right for you with Rocket Mortgage. It's from Quicken Loans. The best. Apply simply, understand fully, and mortgage confidently. Quicken Loans Rocket Mortgage is at rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. By the way, that's the new URL. They got it. Rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. As equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030, rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. That stands for New Sweet Savers, in case you didn't know. That way we get credit. And we thank Rocket Mortgage and Quicken Loans for making the New Screen Savers possible. All right, it's time for a little look at, uh, we're going to do the mailbag in just a bit, but first, uh, Firefox, they have a privacy browser. I didn't even know that. Did you know that? I did know. Jason Howell told me. Firefox Focus. Jason has a review. Watch. Privacy online has become an increasingly hot button topic year after year. I'd even argue that it's never been more top of mind than it is right now. From news surrounding NSA spying to WikiLeaks to practically a new news story every day detailing how some major trove of personal information made its way into the wrong hands, people are looking for ways to change their habits and their attitudes around how they live their online lives. Firefox actually finally brought its private browser called Firefox Focus to Android after hitting iOS last November. And this is a quick review. It's about as straightforward as browsers come. This is the main app screen, just a simple box in the middle where I can drop my search query or if I happen to have a specific URL, I can put that in there too. Now by default, Firefox Focus searches Yahoo, but I can change that in the settings. I can select Google or any number of search engines. Let's just keep things super private with one of my other favorites, DuckDuckGo. I tap that search in there, then I hit search and it pulls up DuckDuckGo and shows me all of my results within that search engine. I am free to browse through this portal and wherever it takes me as much as I like, just like any other browser. But there are a few key differences. Down below, you'll see that little trash can button. I can tap that, or if I happen to back out to the main app screen, it does the same thing. I'll end up seeing a little toast message down below that tells me that the history for this particular session has now been erased. It's gonzo, not coming back. Not only that, in settings, I can see that Firefox Focus has options to block ad trackers that might follow me around all over the web. I can also block analytics trackers. There's also blocking social trackers and other types of trackers, though there is a warning here that it might actually affect how certain videos and certain web pages load. You can also speed up browsing by blocking web fonts. That's a nice bonus feature. And if you want to make sure all of your browsing is done on your device using Firefox Focus, well, no big deal. You can just make it your default browser and then everything is channeled through this privacy browser. Now, one thing you won't find here are tabs, something you're probably going to find in most other browsers. But in this case, the browser is focused on a single session at a time. This is, after all, part of keeping you secure and private as you browse the web using Firefox Focus. Overall, I think Firefox Focus simplifies privacy and it's a really great tool for your app belt. You might as well have it installed if and when you need it. I'm Jason Howell. You can catch me on Tech News Today as well as every Tuesday on All About Android. And 
Well, he said it, but said, next to you, yes, every mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. And he actually he, does have an app belt that he wears around and just puts the <laughs> separate. For some reason, I believe that. <laughs> now he was on jury duty. Is he back? Uh, he's still on jury duty, uh -oh. but he gets done in time to actually come to work. Okay. So. Oh. Yeah. So he still shows up. He got, yeah. He has a, he just is That's hard working. Work. Yeah. He's, he's he's during the he day. Is really. He's a crime fighter by day. Mm -hmm. Tech newser by night. I keep trying to tell him um, to get him to tell me what his uh, trials about. He, can't. he won't. No, he I can't. Know. I know. Uh, I, I, I served on a jury, and I remember I wanted to, wanted more than anything I wanted to talk about mm -hmm. it, but you're not supposed to. Yeah. Uh, we should point out that that Firefox Focus has been out for iOS for some time. It's new on Android. And I, I have to say, this one advantage Android has is on iOS, Safari is your browser. It's always going to launch. There's nothing you can do about that. But on, on Android, you can say, no, I want my default browser to be Firefox. If you if you can give up your tabs. I could never give up my tabs. Really? Yeah. 85 I, tabs open every day. On, even on your phone? No. Actually, yeah, I have a lot of tabs. Mm -hmm. But that's mostly because I just leave them running. Yeah. I, I forget to close them. Yeah, I have like 500 on yeah. the phone, I think. <laughs> Probably a good idea not to have tabs in that case. Let's uh, get the mailbag in here. Megan Maroney is on Tech News Today, Monday through Friday at, uh, what is this? Is this a hint that you want more beer? An empty Lagunitas bottle. A message. Oh. Actually, next week, we're going to Lagunitas, right? Nathan Olivares Giles is going to take us to visit our na next door neighbor, one of the best microbreweries in the world, recently purchased by Heineken for an estimated $2 billion. If people which, come to the studio, will they be served beer? They will not. But I have to point out that there have Jerry been a lot of they will. there have been a lot of parties <laughs> next door, and I think I know why now, huh? Can't get those people to shut up. You're also the host of uh, iOS Today, and let's not uh, forget a brand new time. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan and I do iOS Today Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. Yep, we're taking a break for the July 4th holiday this week. Yes, that's right. So. Pick a pick a question, any question. But just remember, you have to answer that question, or Ooh. your head will be chopped off. Shall I go first? Yes, please. This is from Ronald, who says, Dear Dr. Megan, <laughs> I have a terrible problem oh, no. with pocket calls. Oh, is that what he calls them? He calls them pocket calls. He's being polite. <laughs> I put my phone in my pocket after completing a call, and someone else on my favorites list is called without my knowledge. Every time. I try to remember to lock the phone before I'm done, but I frequently forget. Mm. I am told Android has an app or feature that requires you to confirm before the call is actually placed, but I cannot find a similar app for the iPhone. Please, oh please, oh please. I just added that. Is there a solution for my problem? You know, that's funny because I didn't realize it, but you're right. I think Android does ask for a confirmation. I butt dial, that's what I call it, butt dial all the time. I, did my, I butt dial my son the other day. My daughter butt dialed me twice the day before. Have you accidentally, like, butt sent a voice message? Like, yeah. just... <laughs> of, like... Yeah, like you accidentally it taps the little send a voice message and just... So it's like this, you know, 75 <laughs> minutes. Of, yeah, really long call. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard of someone accidentally calling someone with their Amazon Echo, and so that it was just the recorded conversation in their room. That's like they said, be an like urban call, legend. like I don't know. A lot of things sound like call Jerry, like oh man, um, hey that Mary, would not be good. Shawl Fairy. Yeah. Does she, now now? <laughs> <laughs> shawl of fairy. I was watching Shall a show I... the other day and there was a shawl fairy in it. And I think that's why I have a long message with Jerry's phone number. So but they said that they accidentally just recorded a conversation in their room with I mean imagine if you accidentally dropped in on someone. Echo Shawl Fairy. <laughs> I like that. Okay. I want to write a play called Shawl Fairy. So you do know, I mean he says that he just forgets to lock it, because that's what I just do. I just lock it. If every you just time, push that button. Push the button. Just... But I forget all the time. You just, you know, you're doing something or whatever and you put it back in your pocket and then your favorites is still open and it just makes the call. Yeah. This isn't an immediate solution, but I did uh, do some research and patently Apple that always follows Apple patents says Apple's working on a patent for butt dialing. Um, <laughs> it's, you have to have an Apple watch and through the Apple Watch and the accelerometer and the gyroscope, et cetera, et cetera. It knows it will if you're holding it. No, if you've, yeah, if you've stored it away and will not make a phone call. That would be a really good reason to buy an Apple Watch. I think I like that. Yeah, so, but that's wow. not, that, you know, and we can't say that it's coming at all. They, they, no, they do just, patents they for everything. they write everything. patents all the time. Um. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty good idea. Uh, accidental calling. It, so I'm trying to remember now on Android, does, when you, 
dot, press a number. I think it does say, do you want to call this number? Because it happens to me all the time that I'm sitting there waiting and nothing's happening and realizing, oh, I have to press call. Mm -hmm. So that would be a, that'd be an easy feature to add. Yeah, because there's no apps because then that Apple doesn't let you have an app no, have no, that no, much no access app into that. the phone calling. E either Apple does it or no one does. Yeah, it. they do. They did make one update. You used to be able to, if a phone number appeared anywhere, like on a website or anywhere, like in a message or anything, if you tapped it, it would automatically call. But in iOS 10.3, now you can confirm. But if you are in your phone. If you're in your contacts and you touch a number, it's calling no matter what. So Dale Poco says he doesn't carry his phone in his pants, so he can't butt dial, but he does keep it in his breast pocket, so he man boob dials. That is not a pretty picture. Mm -hmm. Don't call me, Dale. Don't mm -hmm. call me. Email number two. Hi, new screensavers. A few months ago, Megan recommended a math app for the iPad Pro. We have purchased it one for our daughter, who is a junior in high school, uh, and we want to install it on the uh, pad. Can you please tell us the name of that app? Oh, she purchased an iPad Pro, mm -hmm. but she wants the app. Do you remember the name of it? Well, she's a junior in high school. That seemed like we've talked mostly about apps that are for younger kids, math apps. Like I've talked about Sushi Monster, and there was um, Door Number 9 app. But a math app for a high schooler. I, I tell you what I'm going to recommend. Depends what you're looking for. Like, are, are you looking for flashcards, or are you looking for something that will help her understand math. And Wolfram Alpha is a great app. And it's for, you know, so in high school, she's probably doing algebra. She mm -hmm. might be doing, um, you know, uh, uh, quadratic equations and solving quadratic equations. You can actually do that in Wolfram Alpha, and it will show you how it solved it. You can do graphing in it. That is a really nice uh, app that I think is, is more than just math, but its math tools are really sophisticated. People have kind of forgotten about this. It's one of the great things on the internet, is Wolfram Alpha. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm. I, well, you know, another way. I mean, you didn't say what kind of math they were doing, and like coding, if she wants flashcards right. or. Yeah, coding is not necessarily math, but um, I would say that the Swift, the, the iBooks has a whole like Swift tutorials. They right. have videos. They have the whole thing, and it's designed for high school kids. Like Swift itself, like anyone can pick it up, right. five, six, seven. But the whole tutorial of learning to code that you can get for free in iBooks, you can do that uh, in all the Swift has. They have the whole tutorial for that. That that is designed for high school. I kids. love that. And you're, there's so much stuff now you can learn in Swift Playground. Right. So learning to, I mean, I wouldn't say Swift. Do you have to be in high school to play with Swift Playgrounds? Like my kids play with it, younger kids play with it. Oh, it's for every, it. every age. I like to play with it. There's great stuff. But the curriculum is designed for right. high school kids, and so I would definitely recommend that. It's all free. There are graphing calculator apps as well, if that's one of the things she wants to do. There, there are apps to replace the TI-99 calculator that everybody in high school used to buy. I don't think you need to buy it anymore if you've got an iPhone. Um, there's actually a great story about the graphing calculator that used to come with Macintoshes in the very earliest days. Uh, it was written by an engineer at Apple uh, without permission and in included in the operating system without anybody's knowledge. <laughs> if you want to read that story, it's uh, if you go to folklore.org, which is uh, Andy Hertzfeld's stories of uh, Apple's uh, genesis, it's a great story. Uh, but now graphing calculators are widespread and easy to get from uh, the App Store. The chat room's also recommending Khan Academy, which, of course, that might have been what we talked about, because there's a lot, all levels of math. And that's more videos to help you learn, is it to supplement your mm -hmm. math education. If the, it, you know, not, it's not unusual, I'm sorry to say, sometimes math teachers make it harder, not easier, you know, because they love it and they get it, and it can really put people off. If you're struggling with math, uh, going to Khan Academy and taking one of their many math courses there, they're free, they're really well taught, uh, I know a lot of high school kids who use these to supplement the math education they're getting in school. Very good, very good point. Uh, she continues on. Uh, any good grammar apps along the same lines? Well, I don't have an app, but I have a Chrome extension that I use Grammarly. Oh, Lisa use. uses that too. She loves that. So you just add it to Chrome if you use Chrome, and then it's always there just correcting your grammar. Again, Can you use that on iOS, though? I don't think so. Huh? Or can you? That's a good question. I think question. not. I think not. Could you add it? You can't add it to Chrome in iOS? You can't do cons... Yeah, it's not going to have the same capabilities. You know, one of the nice things about Grammarly on a Mac or a PC is it can, you know, watch all your writing. Mm -hmm, but uh, it won't be able to do that. It yeah, that's true. It won't be able to true. do that on yeah. iOS. 
again, a grammar app for a high schooler. Like she that, should just be learning grammar reading. and and studying it and doing it right and not not waiting for Grammarly to tell her. Actually, Grammarly is really great for even little things like typing the the word the twice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I find it a little bit uh, naggy because I like to use non-standard grammar, but I do so with full knowledge of the actual rules, mm -hmm. and I find it a little naggy. I know what I'm doing. I'm mm -hmm. a trained grammarian. And language should be flexible, I think, as yes. grammar should be, too. Yes. I like the Grammar Girl podcast. I'm a fan of that. That's Yeah. Yeah. Grammar Girl's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, look, you know what? Maybe next time on iOS Today, we'll be back uh, not July 4th, but July 11th, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Uh, that would be 1600 UTC. And I'm going to make you this promise. Between now and then, we are going to look every, high and low for a grammar app and a math app that would be appropriate for a high schooler. Okay. On her iPad. Okay. On her iPad. There may not be an answer, but we will look and we'll at least be able to tell you. She says she watches every day. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate it. And congratulations on your junior in high school. That's a good gift, an iPad Pro, I think. Yeah. We're done with the new screensavers. Thank you, Megan Maroney, for coming in on your day off. One of the reasons we don't have Megan on every single show, she already works five days a week, Monday through Friday, but I appreciate it. And I know you have a family, you have things you'd like to do. It is a holiday weekend. I appreciate your being here. Well, I love it. You know, it Good. seems like old times whenever. It is. It's fun, show. isn't it? Yes. Megan is, uh, was a host on the old screensavers mm -hmm. for a long time, put up with me for far too long and why is she still working for me i don't know that's a really good question and when i asked the echo show to show to play the screensavers it played you and kate and no yes. really so yeah if you have an echo show ask her to play the screensavers on youtube and this show is called surprise. the new screensavers new the screensavers new screens new new <laughs> thanks for joining us if you want to watch the show live we're on every saturday afternoon 3 p.m pacific 6 p.m eastern time that's 2200 utc you can even join us in studio as our rocket scientist and his new bride did congratulations you're not on your honeymoon are you Oh, good. Thank God. Uh, you can just email tickets at twit.tv. We encourage you, by the way, if you want to know what's coming up in the week ahead on the network, uh, to subscribe to our newsletter. It's free. No salesman will call. Just go to twit.tv slash newsletter, and you'll get it. Jerry, you do that, right? He, Jerry works very hard on that, and he doesn't use a grammar checker or anything. So, <laughs> so he know, he, you should absolutely, you should absolutely subscribe to Jerry's Labors, twitch.tv slash newsletter. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time on the new Screensavers. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, there's the eye. The eye of Sauron watching us.